Across a dozen different TV shows, 13 movies, and almost 60 years, hundreds of actors have explored the final frontier on Star Trek. Quite a few have since passed on. These are the voyages of the ones you may not know. Before Captain James T. Kirk took the center seat on the Enterprise, she was commanded by Captain Christopher Pike. Jeffrey Hunter played Captain Pike in the original Star Trek pilot, The Cage, but when NBC asked for a second pilot, Hunter refused to return. Multiple accounts by other key Star Trek personnel suggest that his wife at the time played a major role in his decision, which led Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry to cast William Shatner as the newly rechristened Captain Kirk. What's that? I don't say there's anything wrong with me. Pike remained part of Trek canon, with Roddenberry incorporating footage from the cage into a two-part episode called The Menagerie. As for Hunter, his modestly successful career had already included roles in the groundbreaking western The Searchers and the biblical epic King of Kings in which he played Jesus Christ. He continued to work in films and TV after Trek, but suffered a brain hemorrhage on May 26, 1969 at his home in Van Nuys, California, and fell down some stairs fracturing his skull. The 42-year-old Hunter died the next morning on May 27, 1969. While the Klingons and Romulans were recurring enemies on the original Star Trek, only one individual villain appeared on the show more than once. Harcourt Fenton Harry Mudd, interstellar conman, twice portrayed by character actor Roger C. Carmel. In his early 30s when he played Mudd, Carmel had already racked up a sizable amount of credits on Broadway, TV, and in film when he got the nod. He voiced the character once more for Mudd's Passion, a 1973 episode of Star Trek The Animated Series. Carmel died at age 54 on November 11, 1986, with an official cause of death of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a disease of the heart muscles. In Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, Admiral James T. Kirk finally confronts a secret from his past, namely that he has a grown son named David from a previous relationship with Dr. Carol Marcus, head of the Genesis Project. Although father and son are initially not on good terms, they reconcile by the end of the film, only for David to meet his death at the hands of the Klingons in Star Trek III The Search for Spock. David was played by Merritt Buttrick, a Florida native who amassed a steady amount of work between 1981 and 1989, mostly on TV, that included a regular role as Johnny Slash on Square Pegs and a guest appearance on the Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1 episode Symbiosis as an alien named Tijan. Unfortunately, his career was cut short when he died at age 29 due to complications from AIDS on March 17, 1989. After the regular cast, there may have been no Star Trek TOS actor more closely associated with the show than Mark Leonard. The actor first appeared in the classic Season 1 episode Balance of Terror as the commander of a Romulan vessel playing a deadly cat-and-mouse game with the Enterprise. He returned in Season 2 as Sarek, the estranged father of Mr. Spock in the episode Journey to Babel. Mr. Spark will conduct you. I prefer another guide, Captain. Leonard voiced Sarek for the Yesteryear episode of Star Trek The Animated Series and showed up as a Klingon commander in 1979's Star Trek The Motion Picture, making him the only actor to play a member of the three major Trek alien races. He donned the ears again as Sarek for three feature films, also reprising the character in the Sarek and Unification Part 1 episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. Sarek was clearly Leonard's most famous role, but his journeyman career also included extensive work on the stage as well as guest spots on The Incredible Hulk, Hawaii Five-0, Mission Impossible, and a recurring role as General Urko on the short-lived 1974 Planet of the Apes series. Leonard died on November 22, 1996, at the age of 72 from cancer. Born in Bombay in 1948, Persis Kambata became, in 1965, just the third Indian woman in history to compete in the Miss Universe pageant. Her work as a model led to small roles in a handful of Bollywood and British pictures before she was picked to play Lieutenant Ilea, the bald Delta navigator of the Enterprise. Kambata agreed to shave her head for the role, which was initially developed in 1977 for the Star Trek Phase II TV series before that was abandoned in favor of Star Trek The Motion Picture in 1979. Her appearance in Star Trek led to more roles in films like Nighthawks and Megaforce, and although she was a contender for the title role in the James Bond thriller Octopussy, the part went to Maude Adams. Guest spots on shows like MacGyver and Lois and Clark The New Adventures of Superman followed. Plagued since 1980 by health problems, Kambada succumbed to a massive heart attack in Mumbai on August 18, 1998 at the age of 49. Born in Georgia in 1920, DeForest Kelly pursued acting after serving in World War II and landed his first role in the 1946 film Fear in the Night. A consistent stream of film, stage, and TV gigs followed, with his role as Morgan Earp in 1957's Gunfight at the OK Corral getting him cast mostly as villains for the nine years that followed. Spock, you haven't changed a bit. You're just as warm and sociable as ever. 
Although he was at one point considered for the role of Mr. Spock, Kelly appeared in neither of the show's two pilots. Series creator Gene Roddenberry offered him the role of the chief medical officer renamed McCoy prior to the beginning of production on season one, and Kelly went on to appear in all but three episodes during the show's three-year, 79-episode run. He also voiced McCoy in Star Trek The Animated Series. Like many TOS cast members, Kelly hit a dry spell in the 1970s until he got the call for Star Trek The Motion Picture. That led to five subsequent films and a brief cameo in the premiere episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. McCoy's mix of sarcasm and compassion, and his chemistry with William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, made him an indispensable part of Star Trek. Kelly died of stomach cancer at the age of 79 on June 11, 1999. Canadian actor John Colicos made Star Trek history as Core, the show's first major Klingon adversary in the original series Season 1 episode, Errand of Mercy. You do not like to be pushed. Very good. According to Mark Cushman's These Are the Voyages, Colicos was supposed to play Core again in Season 2's The Trouble with Tribbles and Season 3's Day of the Duff, but was unavailable both times. He, along with the actors who did play the main Klingon antagonists on those segments, later appeared on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, reprising Kor in the episode Blood Oath. In addition to two more episodes of DS9, Kalikas's other sci-fi credentials include the role of Count Baltar on the original 1978 Battlestar Galactica and voicing Apocalypse on X-Men the Animated Series in the mid-1990s. Before his death at age 71 on March 6, 2000, Kalikas had compiled nearly 100 screen credits, but he'll always be the first Klingon. No one loved the Enterprise more than Chief Engineer Montgomery Scott, and James Doohan's portrayal of the Miracle Worker is a cornerstone of the Star Trek universe. I can't change the laws of physics. I've got to have 30 minutes. According to Inside Star Trek The Real Story, creator Gene Roddenberry almost fired him after his first episode, but Doohan's Scotty became an integral part of all three seasons of the original series, the animated series, and seven of the feature films, as well as a sixth season episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. A veteran of World War II, the Canadian-born Doohan saw combat and was wounded during the D-Day invasion of Normandy. He already had a vast trove of TV and radio work under his belt when he boarded the Enterprise and was quite adept at voiceover work. He often voiced aliens, computers, and other non-humanoids on the original series. He also performed multiple roles on the animated series. While work outside of Star Trek dried up in his later years, he remained enormously popular at Star Trek conventions until 2004 when Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease forced him out of the spotlight. He died in 2005, and some of his ashes made it into space in 2008 and 2012. Jane Wyatt's career in film and TV stretched from 1934 to 1992, but she is probably best remembered for two roles, homemaker Margaret Anderson for six seasons and some 200-plus episodes of the sitcom Father Knows Best, and Amanda Grayson, the human mother of the Enterprise's first officer, Mr. Spock. She first played Amanda on the original series Season 2 episode, Journey to Babel, which movingly explored the backstory of Spock and his strained relationship with his father, Sarek. Wyatt reprised the role in 1986's Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. She won three Emmys for Father Knows Best and worked consistently for the rest of her life, even scoring a recurring role on St. Elsewhere from 1985 to 1987. Wyatt passed away at age 96 in October 2006. Known as the first Lady of Star Trek, Majel Barrett met then-married Trek creator Gene Roddenberry in 1961, and at some point the two began an affair. Roddenberry cast Barrett as number one in the first Trek pilot, The Cage, but was asked to remove the character for the subsequent series. Nevertheless, the series creator snuck her back on in the role of Nurse Christine Chapel, a move that, according to the book Inside Star Trek The Real Story, almost got the both of them fired by Desilu Studios head Lucille Ball. Roddenberry and Barrett stuck around, however, and Barrett, who married Roddenberry in 1969, played Chapel in 25 original series episodes, as well as the animated series and two of the feature films. She later played Luxana Troy, mother of ship's counselor Deanna Troy, on multiple episodes of The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. She also provided the voice of the ship's computer in every Star Trek series through Voyager, even making a couple appearances on Enterprise as well as the 2009 reboot film for which she completed her work shortly before her death. Ensign authorization code 95, Victor Victor 2. Authorization not recognized. A regular on the convention circuit, she remained devoted to Star Trek and Gene Roddenberry, who died in 1991, until her own death from leukemia in 2008 at the age of 76. Khan Noonien Singh is generally considered one of the greatest villains, if not the greatest, in Trek history. Khan! 
one of a group of genetically enhanced humans who tried to conquer Earth in the late 20th century. He and his followers put themselves in suspended animation aboard an interstellar vessel and slept for centuries, waking up and trying to take over the Enterprise in the classic episode Space Seed. Khan returned 15 years later in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, out for revenge against Captain Kirk for the death of Khan's wife. Khan was played both times by the Mexican actor Ricardo Montalban, who also starred as Mr. Work in the hit 1970s TV series Fantasy Island, and also played the key role of circus owner Armando in two of the Planet of the Apes movies from earlier that decade. A star in Mexico since the 1940s, he kept working into his 80s, landing late roles in the Spy Kids series. Montalban also co-founded the Nosotros Foundation to advocate for the better portrayal of Latinos in the entertainment industry. He died in 2009 at age 88 from heart failure. Born in Newark, New Jersey, William Campbell had the distinction of playing two of the best-known villains on the original Trek series. In Season 1, he played Trelane, the superpower of being known as the Squire of Gothis, who turns out to be a spoiled child using the Enterprise and its crew as literal playthings. In Season 2, he played Captain Koloth, the slippery Klingon commander who clashes with Kirk in The Trouble with Tribbles, a role he reprised for the Blood Oath episode of Deep Space Nine. Among Campbell's other credits were Elvis Presley's screen debut, 1956's Love Me Tender, 1963's Dementia 13, which was Francis Ford Coppola's first directorial effort, and the 1964 psychological thriller Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte with Betty Davis and Olivia de Havilland. He passed away in 2011 at age 87. Born in Syria, Michael Ansara was often cast as Native American, Latino, and Middle Eastern characters in films and TV shows. Before playing the brutal yet reasonable Commander Kang on the Season 3 original series episode Day of the Dove, he was best known for playing the legendary Native American Cochise on the TV series Broken Narrow. Fans will also remember him for several appearances on I Dream of Jeannie opposite Barbara Eden, to whom he was also married for 16 years, and as the voice of Mr. Freeze on Batman the Animated Series. He got to reprise the role of Kang in the DS9 episode Blood Oath, and in the Voyager episode Flashback. And Sara died in 2013 at the age of 91. Cast by Gene Roddenberry in the role for the original Star Trek pilot The Cage, Leonard Nimoy's Spock was the only character that survived a complete cast overhaul for the series, even though NBC was against his inclusion. The cool, logical, half-human Spock became the show's most popular character. Nimoy also snagged two Emmy nominations for the role. Nimoy's place in pop culture history had long been secured when he passed away at age 83 in 2015 from Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, or COPD. In addition to his extensive acting and directing credits, which included helming two of the Star Trek feature films, Nimoy was a longtime advocate for the arts, a devotee to science, and an activist for Jewish causes. He even had an asteroid named after him. The cosmic ballet goes on. Grace Lee Whitney appeared as Yeoman Janice Rand in just eight episodes of Star Trek The Original Series, but Rand remains an enduring character from the show's early days. Halfway through the first season, Whitney was released from her contract. Reasons given for her exit include budget cuts and a desire on the network's part to let Kirk pursue women on the show without having Rand around. She later alleged that a sexual assault by an unnamed studio executive may have contributed as well. Whitney did return for brief appearances in four Star Trek films and remained popular on the convention circuit. She had a long screen and singing career before Trek and continued to work afterwards, although she dedicated much of her later years as a survivor of substance and alcohol abuse to helping others with their recovery. She died from natural causes on May 1, 2015 at the age of 85. During his brief 27 years of life, Russian-born Anton Yelchin still managed to make an impact on audiences around the world. Yelchin played Ensign Pavel Chekhov in J.J. Abrams' 2009 reboot of Star Trek, 2013's Star Trek Into Darkness, and 2016's Star Trek Beyond, which was released after his death. Producers announced that the role would not be recast after Yelchin's death in an accident on June 19, 2016. Yelchin first made an impression in 2002 in the TV miniseries Taken, and went on to star in films such as Alpha Dog, Terminator Salvation, Lake Crazy, Fright Night, and Green Room. A documentary about his life, Love and Tosha, premiered at the 2019 Sundance Film Festival. René Abergenois began his career in the theater and landed three Broadway plays during the 1968-1969 season, earning a Tony Award for the third, Coco. His first big film breakthrough was as Father Mulcahy in Robert Altman's 1970 film M.A.S.H. Abergenois appeared in several more Altman films, as well as dozens of other features and TV shows over his lengthy career. He had a brief role that was cut out of the theatrical release of 1991's Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, but his lasting contribution to the franchise was on Deep Space Nine, where he played the title station's shape-shifting head of security, Odo. 
the conflicted character, who helped the Federation battle his own race, the Founders, was a fan favorite. A Bergenois died of lung cancer in 2019 at age 79. Best known for playing Tom Robinson in the 1962 film adaptation of To Kill a Mockingbird, Brock Peters would go on to appear in several Star Trek projects. He appeared as Admiral Cartwright in both Star Trek IV The Voyage Home and Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, where it was revealed that he had betrayed the Federation and allied with a group of dissident Klingons to sabotage peace talks. Peters would return to the franchise in 1996 in a very different role, playing Joseph Sisko, father of Captain Benjamin Sisko, on six episodes of Deep Space Nine. You know, Dad, you could come and visit us at the station once in a while. Don't start that again. Earth's my home. It's where I belong. Peters also starred in a number of other films, including Soylent Green and Porgy and Bess, a musical in which he also starred on Broadway. Sci-fi fans may also recognize him as the voice of Darth Vader in the Star Wars radio dramas, where he stood in for James Earl Jones. Peters died from pancreatic cancer in 2005 at the age of 78. In the Deep Space Nine episode, Family Business, comedian Andrea Martin was cast to play the Ferengi Quark in Rom's mother, Ishka. But once she became a recurring character, Cecily Adams was brought in to fill the role in four additional episodes. Adams was actually younger than the actors who played her sons, leaving it to the series' impressive makeup effects to make her appear older. The daughter of Get Smart star Don Adams, Cecily didn't act as much as her dad did, only taking small roles in various other shows. For most of her career, Adams was actually a casting director and worked on classics like That 70s Show and Third Rock from the Sun. In 2004, Adams passed away from lung cancer at the young age of just 46. Television audiences of the 1960s knew Robert Lansing well. He could be seen on Wagon Train, The Twilight Zone, and Gunsmoke, among countless other shows. In the 1980s, he played Control, the mysterious supervisor in the hit action series The Equalizer, and Lieutenant Jack Curtis in the short-lived sci-fi adventure show Auto Man. During his heyday, Lansing was brought in to play Gary Seven in the classic Star Trek episode Assignment Earth. The original idea was for the episode to serve as a backdoor pilot for a spin-off with Lansing and fellow guest star Terry Garr, but it never took off. Seven was a human whose ancestors had been abducted by a mysterious alien race, tasked with watching over the affairs of mankind in the 20th century. Lansing passed away in 1994, and his legacy lives on. The story of Gary Seven's people and their mission was continued in Season 2 of Picard. There are few mythological figures in Star Trek lore that conjure up as much mystique and reverence as the Klingon warrior Kalos. In an episode of the original Star Trek, he's said to be the founder of the Klingon Empire. In Star Trek The Next Generation, his legend has grown to the greatest warrior in Klingon history, an almost Christ-like figure who was prophesied to return and lead his people to new glory. When he did, resurrected by genetic engineering in the episode Rightful Heir, he was played by Kevin Conway. Science fiction fans know Conway's voice well. He provided the intro and outro narration for the 1995 reboot of The Outer Limits. He also had a lengthy career on the big screen, mostly playing supporting roles in movies like Slaughterhouse-Five, Jennifer Eight, and The Quick and the Dead. He had countless credits on TV, and in the late 2000s, he joined The Good Wife in a recurring role as Jonas Stern, his final on-screen role. He died in 2020. Richard Hurd had roles in several iconic sci-fi franchises. He played the Visitor's Supreme Commander in the cult classic V in 1983 and its follow-up V The Final Battle. He also turned up in a recurring role in Sequest DSV, as well as a pair of episodes of Quantum Leap. Trekkies will no doubt remember him as Admiral Owen Paris, the father of Star Trek Voyager helmsman Tom Paris, who becomes a presence in the later seasons of the show as the ship got closer to home. Admiral Paris wasn't actually Heard's only Star Trek role. In the Next Generation episode, Birthright, he also portrayed the leader of a group of Klingons who had been taken captive by Romulans and made a home on a remote colony with their former adversaries. Outside of Trek, audiences probably remember him best from Seinfeld as Mr. Wilhelm, George Costanza's boss when he worked for the New York Yankees. Wilhelm? My name is Tanya. Heard died from complications from cancer in 2020 at the age of 87. W. Morgan Shepard played four major characters across multiple Star Trek shows and films, with the rare distinction of playing different characters in the original Star Trek timeline and the J.J. Abrams reboots. His first role came in 1988 when he played Federation scientist Ira Graves in the Next Generation episode The Schizoid Man, in which he steals Data's body to extend his lifespan. He then moved to the films, playing the Klingon commandant at the Rura Penthe penal colony in Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, then returning to TV in the Star Trek Voyager episode Bliss. In 2009, Shepard came back to Trek to portray the Vulcan administrator who berates a young Mr. Spock. 
Sci-fi fans will also remember his role in the Doctor Who episode The Impossible Astronaut, where he plays an older version of Canton Delaware III with his younger self played by his real-life son, Mark Shepard. Mark announced the passing of his father in 2019 at the age of 86. Spock's a logical Vulcan who eschews emotion, so fans were as surprised as the rest of the crew to be introduced to his betrothed, a Vulcan named T'Pring. She was played by Arlene Martel in the now-iconic episode Amok Time. Known for its famous fight music, the episode pits Spock and Kirk against each other in a deathmatch. Before Star Trek, Martel had appeared in a pair of episodes of The Twilight Zone as well as small parts in I Dream of Jeannie and The Man from U.N.C.L.E. She continued acting on television through the 70s and 80s, but was largely retired by the 2000s. T'Pring has been recast for 2022's Star Trek Strange New Worlds, where she is played by Gia Sandu, but Martel will long be remembered as the first in the role. In 2014, she suffered a heart attack that would lead to her death shortly thereafter at the age of 78. Star Trek Deep Space Nine was markedly different from its predecessors, with a decidedly religious angle to its story, something that Star Trek had almost entirely shied away from to that point. Embodying this religious element were the Bajorans, whose spiritual leader was Kai Opaka, played by Camille Saviola. Saviola's filmography is littered with guest roles in some of TV's biggest hits, L.A. Law, NYPD Blue, Friends, ER, Judging Amy, and Entourage, just to name a few. She only appeared in four episodes of Deep Space Nine, but Saviola would be best remembered for her recurring role as Kai Opaka. She was pivotal early in the series, helping guide Commander Sisko into his role as the Bajoran Emissary to the Prophets. Saviola died of heart failure in 2021 at age 71. Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country featured film veteran David Warner as Klingon Chancellor Gorkin, whose death kicks off the film's riveting story, but it's actually not the first role he played in the franchise, nor would it be the last. A few years earlier, Warner played St. John Talbot in Star Trek V The Final Frontier. He also returned in Star Trek The Next Generation in the classic two-parter Chain of Command, where he played a brutal Cardassian interrogator who tortures Captain Picard. Shall we begin again? How many lights are there? Beyond Star Trek, Warner was famous for roles in Titanic and The Omen, and had key roles in cult classics like Time Bandits and Tron, while also doing some well-regarded voiceover work. An Emmy Award winner for his role in the 1981 miniseries Masada, Warner died in July 2022 at age 80 from a cancer-related illness. One of the most unexpected villains on Deep Space Nine was Kai Wynn, who took the role of Bajor's spiritual leader after the death of Opaka in Season 2. She quickly became a political rival for Captain Sisko, and her scheming machinations and hunger for power made her a threat to peace. Playing her was Louise Fletcher, one of the most highly respected Hollywood actors ever to earn a recurring role in the franchise. In 1975, Fletcher starred as the similarly sinister nurse Ratched opposite Jack Nicholson in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, a role that earned her an Academy Award. After a nearly 60-year career, Fletcher died peacefully at her home in September of 2022 at the age of 88. Kirstie Alley is no doubt best known for her role as Rebecca Howe on Cheers. She followed that up with her own series, Veronica's Closet, in 1997, and led several other films and shows. But years before her television fame, Ali played the iconic role of the Vulcan Lieutenant Savick in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. In the film, she's the protege of Mr. Spock. They're notable for being the first characters to ever speak the Vulcan language on screen. Ali turned down an offer to return in Star Trek III and was replaced by Robin Curtis. Nearly a decade later, when her Cheers co-star Kelsey Grammer guest starred in an episode of The Next Generation, it was originally planned for Ali to reprise her role. But according to Star Trek.com, scheduling conflicts quashed her appearance. Still, Ali's mark on the franchise is a big one, and the Trek community felt a major loss when she passed away from colon cancer in December 2022 at age 71. In Season 2 of Star Trek Picard, the former Enterprise captain finds himself squaring off with an old foe, the Borg Queen, first seen in Star Trek First Contact. But it's not quite the same Borg Queen. Instead of original actress Alice Krieg, it was Annie Wershing under the Borg makeup for that season. Wershing was already a Star Trek alum, having guest starred in an episode of Star Trek Enterprise all the way back in 2002, her very first credited role. From there, Wershing appeared all over television, with roles in Charmed, Boston Legal, and Supernatural before landing a recurring role in 24 in 2009. She was the voice of Tess in the wildly popular video game The Last of Us, while fans of The Vampire Diaries will remember her from her role as Lily. She appeared to be on the ascent, securing regular roles in the Marvel series Runaways and Bosch. Sadly, Wershing died from cancer in early 2023 at just 45. Her Star Trek roles were both the first and final on-screen appearances of her career. 
When the original Star Trek debuted in 1966, it had a black woman on the bridge and a rare display of racial diversity on primetime television. Nichelle Nichols played communications officer Uhura and quickly became a trailblazing icon for both women's rights and racial equality. African Americans saw the show and went, what? You know, like, we're on TV. She's also credited for half of the first interracial kiss on television with series star William Shatner. Before Trek, Nichols played a role in a Gene Roddenberry-written episode of The Lieutenant, all about racial intolerance. But the episode proved too controversial for TV and never aired, making her role as Uhura her first credited role on television. Nichols, who helped inspire scores of young women, famously quit Star Trek, only to be talked into returning to the series by Martin Luther King Jr. himself. Nichols became the face of women in science and even became a recruiter for NASA in the 1970s. While she never won any major awards for her performance as Uhura, she was nominated for a Daytime Emmy in 2017 for a four-episode run on The Young and the Restless and received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Academy of Science Fiction, Horror, and Fantasy Films. Nichols died at the age of 89 in 2022, leaving behind a legacy of grace and strength for future generations. Gary Graham played the Vulcan ambassador Soval in Star Trek Enterprise. Early on in the series, Soval is something of an antagonist to Scott Bakula's Captain Archer, with his belief that humans are yet ready to launch the NX-01 Enterprise and join the larger interstellar community. By the 2001 premiere of Enterprise, Graham was already well known to sci-fi audiences. Soval wasn't even his first role in Star Trek. In 1995, he guest starred in the Star Trek Voyager episode Cold Fire. He also starred in the 1989 cult series Alien Nation. Graham took over the James Caan role from the film version of Nation, playing police officer Matthew Sykes. He starred in the show's only season and returned for five subsequent made-for-TV movies. It was the only time he led his own show, but it certainly wasn't his only sci-fi cult classic, the other being the dystopian B-movie classic Robot Jocks. A decade after Enterprise ended, Graham reprised his role as Soval in the fan film Star Trek Prelude to Axanar. He'd planned to return for a full-length feature version, but the project became the target of a multi-million dollar copyright lawsuit, and Graham left the production in 2020. He passed away on January 22, 2024, survived by his wife Becky and daughter Haley. <laughs>